The story of the Irish red legs of Barbados is a poignant chapter in the history of the Irish diaspora, illustrating how the reach of British colonial power extended far beyond Europe. During the 17th century, thousands of Irish men, women, and children were forcibly transported to the Caribbean, particularly to Barbados, under a system of indentured servitude following the brutal Cromwellian conquest of Ireland. These people and their descendants came to be known as the Red Legs, a name derived from their sun-scorched skin after long hours of labor in the tropical climate. Unlike African slaves, Irish indentured servants were often granted freedom after their service period, but they frequently faced ongoing poverty and marginalization. This short documentary from Emerald Chronicle explores the historical circumstances leading to the forced migration, the lives of these Irish people in the Caribbean, and their enduring legacy as a distinct, yet often forgotten, community. Oliver Cromwell's campaign in Ireland was a defining moment of the 17th century, marked by extreme violence, land seizures, and the suppression of Irish Catholic resistance. Beginning in 1649, Cromwell led a well-equipped and ruthless force into Ireland, aiming to subdue the population and reassert English dominance. The campaign resulted in massacres at Droida and Wexford, mass displacement of civilians, and the seizure of vast tracts of land for redistribution to English and Scottish settlers. The Cromwellian conquest aimed not just at military victory, but at altering the social fabric of Ireland. The English Parliament sanctioned the systematic deportation of thousands of Irish as a method of both punishment and economic gain. These deported individuals were often Catholic peasants or political prisoners who found themselves sold into a system of indentured servitude in far-off colonies. Their fate was to serve English and later British interests in building the burgeoning plantation economies of the Caribbean. The process of deporting Irish people to the Caribbean was highly organized. English colonial authorities worked alongside merchants and shipowners who profited from human cargo. Between the mid-17th and early 18th centuries, records estimate that up to 50,000 Irish were sent to various colonies, including the Caribbean islands of Barbados, Jamaica, and Montserrat. Barbados, however, became the most significant hub for this forced migration. The journey to Barbados was treacherous. Packed into overcrowded ships, many Irish deportees endured malnutrition, disease, and brutal treatment from ship captains and crew. Death rates were alarmingly high, with some estimates suggesting that up to a third of passengers perished before reaching the Caribbean shores. Once in Barbados, Irish men and women were sold at auctions to plantation owners, where they would begin their indenture, a form of labor contract that typically lasted four to seven years. Though technically different from chattel slavery, the conditions were grim. Servants worked side by side with African slaves under the harsh supervision of overseers, performing tasks that ranged from field labor to domestic service. Many died from overwork, tropical diseases, or mistreatment before their term was completed. The experience of Irish indentured servants was defined by a punishing daily existence. Plantation work involved clearing dense vegetation, planting and harvesting sugarcane, and enduring relentless heat and humidity. Like their African counterparts, Irish servants were subject to physical punishment and were often given meager rations, inadequate shelter, and limited rights. However, unlike enslaved Africans, indentured servants could eventually gain freedom. This freedom, though, came with challenges. When released from their servitude, many Irish struggled to secure land or stable livelihoods. The economic system in Barbados and other Caribbean colonies was structured to benefit wealthy European plantation owners, leaving little room for small-scale farming or independent commerce. As a result, many former servants fell into cycles of poverty that persisted for generations. The term red legs emerged as a colloquial nickname, referring to the sunburnt skin of the Irish workers, who toiled in the open fields with little protection from the scorching Caribbean sun. This visual marker set them apart from other groups and symbolized their marginalized status within colonial society. The red legs were seen as poor and socially inferior, 
often relegated to low-status labor even after their indenture was complete. Over time, the term evolved beyond its physical connotations to represent a unique ethnic group within the Caribbean, distinguished by their European features, yet often lumped into a lower socio-economic class alongside freed African slaves and other marginalized populations. The Red Legs lived in isolated communities, primarily in the less arable, hilly parts of Barbados, where they subsisted on small-scale farming and fishing. The descendants of the Irish Red Legs still inhabit parts of Barbados and nearby islands. These communities maintain a distinct identity, marked by a shared history that ties them to Ireland and a story of endurance in the face of hardship. Despite the centuries that have passed, many Red Legs today face economic challenges, with some living in conditions of poverty that echo the struggles of their ancestors. Cultural practices among the Red Legs, such as oral storytelling, have helped preserve their history, though formal recognition of their unique heritage has been limited. Historians and anthropologists have documented some of their traditions, including Irish surnames that continue to appear within these communities and traces of customs brought over by their ancestors. Efforts to highlight the story of the Irish Red Legs have increased in recent years, with documentaries, books, and academic studies shedding light on their experiences. These efforts have sought not only to honor their resilience, but also to educate wider audiences about the complexities of colonial history and the diverse European contributions to Caribbean societies. The story of the Irish Red Legs adds depth to the broader understanding of the Irish diaspora. While emigration from Ireland is often associated with the 19th century Great Famine and subsequent waves to North America, the experience of forced migration to the Caribbean illustrates an earlier and more brutal chapter of displacement. In comparison to other diaspora groups, such as African slaves, the Irish in Barbados shared the experience of disenfranchisement but occupied a complex social niche as white Europeans within a predominantly black and racially stratified society. The differences in legal status between indentured servants and African slaves had significant implications. Although Irish servants were technically temporary and could eventually gain freedom, their experience challenges simple categorizations. The end of their servitude did not guarantee equality or opportunity, and they often faced discrimination similar to that experienced by other marginalized groups. Recent efforts to explore and commemorate the history of the Irish Red Legs have come from various quarters, including academics, cultural historians, and descendants themselves. Despite these efforts, mainstream recognition of their story remains relatively modest. Part of this oversight can be attributed to the broader focus on African slavery and colonial plantation systems, which, while justified, often obscures other narratives of forced migration. Educators, museums, and Irish cultural organizations have taken up the cause, striving to bring the story of the Red Legs into public consciousness. Documentaries and publications have started to fill the gaps, offering a richer and more nuanced picture of colonial history that acknowledges all who suffered under its systems. The legacy of the Irish Red Legs is a testament to the enduring impacts of colonialism, illustrating how the reach of 17th century geopolitical events extended well beyond the shores of Europe to shape lives and communities across the Atlantic. This chapter of history underscores the complexities of identity, migration, and survival. Remembering the Red Legs enriches our understanding of the Irish diaspora, challenging us to appreciate the diverse and often painful paths that have led to the modern era. Their story serves as a powerful reminder of resilience and the unyielding spirit of those who, despite being transported against their will and subjected to harsh conditions, adapted and forged a sense of community and identity that persists into the present day. By bringing the tale of the Red Legs into broader historical discourse, we ensure that their voices, too, are part of the collective narrative of colonization and human endurance.